corruption. That's a win-win situation. It's, it's a win for the investors who want to make sure their money is going into a, a more stable economy. And as I said, the more that Burma can reduce corruption, the better off its democracy it's going to be and the better off its people are going to be. So I would say don't just invest blindly, invest in ways that seem to move the process in the proper direction. Okay. So that's tourists, that's investors, and politicians. What, what should they do with Burma? The one thing you don't want to see is, even though I think it's good that many of these sanctions are being eliminated, the one thing that politicians around the world should not do is, first of all, be naively optimistic and think, okay, it's over, it's a democracy. It's a, this is a long-term process, and so it's not about going to Burma now for a photo op and then not coming back for five years. This takes commitment. So once you put Burma on your radar, it has to stay there on a regular basis. You have to continuously care about what is happening in Burma. So don't be naively optimistic. Don't expect democracy to be over and done with it in, you know, with, with one election. The other thing is, is to not put unbearable pressure on a fragile set of institutions. As I said, democracy takes time. And what you don't want are, uh, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but you don't, with this new human rights situation in the western part of the country, you don't want to start putting pressure on Aung San Suu Kyi or the government saying, hey, you know, this is a mess, you got to fix this right now, otherwise you're being hypocrites about human rights. The fact is, this is a mess. The situation you're dealing with is a mess. And so there has to be a certain amount of restraint, or at least patience, to let Burma figure out as much as it can on its own how to solve these issues. That strengthens institutions when you do that. And if Burma says, hey, we can't do this alone, let them ask first. Don't just take the heavy-handed approach of saying, well, we're going to go in and send our advisors in and fix everything for you. Because that actually in the long run weakens institutions because they don't get a chance to solve the problems on their own. So it takes a lot of kind of support, commitment, patience, and understanding of outside politicians, whether we're talking about ASEAN or we're talking about the European Union or the UN, to let Burmese democracy thrive in the best way it can. Well, thank you, Dr. Darren Zook, uh, for sharing with us here about, uh, at the National Greatest Stories Online News. And thank you for joining us here. Say hi at the National Greatest Stories column, I'm Robin Steinberg.